I recently tried some color film from Reflex Lab for the first time. The Daylight Balanced 400 film, and also the Tungsten Balanced 800 film. In case you're not familiar, these are bulk loaded Kodak motion picture films with the Remjet removed, making them easier to shoot in regular cameras and develop at your local lab using the C41 process. Reflex Lab 400 is repackaged Kodak Vision 3 250D. Therefore, I decided to shoot it at 250 ISO. You can of course get fine results at 400 because of the flexibility offered by digital scanning and the C41 process, but I always prefer to lean towards overexposure with negative film. This roll was shot in my Canon EOS 500 while I was in Queenstown, New Zealand earlier this year. You may have seen some of these shots in my how to use ND filters video, which I'll leave a card for in case you want to check it out. Because of the lack of a remjet layer, these films can result in reddish halations in the very bright parts of your images. I'm personally not a fan of strong halations myself, but they aren't as distracting in regular daytime shots. It can give the illusion of warm highlights, which might be desirable, especially in cooler scenes. So I guess I don't mind it too much on this roll. Overall, I've always loved the look of Kodak Vision 250D and have shot a lot of the original stuff over the years myself. So I wasn't surprised by the results of this film. It gives the same great colors, but with the addition of that halation in some shots. It makes a great all-round film that you can use not only in daylight, but works well at night too. Here's a shot I took with a wide angle lens and tripod at nighttime while we were on the road. It's a little overexposed, but a home rescan could probably rescue some details. You can see the full effect of the halation here. For comparison, here's a night shot from some regular 250D without the halation. So I think Reflex 400 makes a great alternative to films like Portra or the more expensive Cine Still version. You get nice colors, great detail, and it looks good even next to some medium format shots I took in matching scenes. I also like the metal canisters that Reflex use for their film. It's worth pointing out that Reflex Lab isn't at all affiliated with this video, nor did they know I was making it. These rolls were kindly gifted to me by my friend Darren, and I just thought I'd share my thoughts and results. So let's have a look at more shots from the Reflex Lab 800T that I shot. Results were the same as Cine Still and other variants of Kodak Vision 500T that I shot in the past, which is a good thing. Of course, there's no remjet, so you'll get that halation in bright point highlights, especially if you shoot bright lights at night, which is what I did a lot of with this roll when I was reviewing the Leica M3 for a video on the channel. I'll leave a card for that video too if you're interested. Although the tungsten color balance lends itself well to artificial lights, this film is perfectly usable in the daytime too with the added advantage of higher sensitivity. That could make it useful for indoor shooting or maybe street where you want higher shutter speeds. When you're getting digital scans, the T or D designation doesn't really matter too much. So I would choose based on the speed first and the color balance second. At the end of the day, this is yet another nice option for shooting cine film amongst all the others out there. Not everyone is willing to deal with the Ramjet like myself, so the variety and value combination offered by these resellers means film photography is accessible to more people, and I'm all for that. Even though I don't much like the halation, I know that many people are fans of the effect, and it's still great to have more options. I've tried the black and white double X option from Reflex too, and wouldn't mind trying some of the others in their range. They even seem to have bulk loaded rolls of the original stock available for purchase too. The results I got from these rolls were pretty clean, but there may have been a few marks and dust near the ends of the rolls especially, potentially due to being modified or bulk loaded film. This goes with the territory and is to be expected. You can often get more light leaks near the beginning, especially if you load in bright light. Even the few rolls of cine still I've shot in the past have had equivalent or even worse defects. So personally, I'd rather pay the much lower price for something like this, or just shoot the original stock myself with the Remjet on it. And to quickly sum up Vision 500T and variants like the Reflex 800, you can expect great dynamic range, detail, and high saturation, especially when exposed well. I personally always shoot it at 400 ISO, especially in darker situations like what you've seen a lot of in this video. It helps overcorrect for metering errors due to artificial lights and gives you a denser negative with more shadow detail. If you've tried either of these film stocks, let me know your thoughts, and I hope you got something out of this combined review. Thanks again to Darren for sending me the rolls, and to everyone who's watched this far. 
Check out my video comparing different variants of Kodak Vision Film if you like this one, and I'll see you on the next video here on the channel.